and we get to the conversation pretty much where the minister was um, being told after she explained one thing, it sounds like we're still a long way from the government actioning anything when it comes to helping the media. So we're still a long way away. You guys are talking about it, great, but we're still a long way away from actioning anything that would help news media in New Zealand. And that's where the conversation starts. Hmm. Um, well, there is a process. I mean, you know, I one of the first things I did uh, when I became a minister, uh, considering the fact that, you know, in the past, uh, before politics, I was a journalist and I believe in journalism. It's coming back. It's just paused for a second for dramatic effect. Um, and what journalism, is, journalism does for our democracy. I, 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 I know that it is really, really important to our society. And what I've been doing in opposition was to listen to the sector. And this issue has actually been coming for years. It's something that, you know, potentially... Um, the you, you might be surprised. In fact, this is an interesting observation from today. If you listen to Luxon this morning, and if you listen to Melissa Lee, we may not play the parts where she does it, but there was a real, real, real concerted effort today to blame Labour. Like, today in particular, it feels like they've ramped it up to say, you know, nothing to do with us, all about Labour, nothing to do with us, you know, blame them. Uh, she definitely does it in this conversation when she says at one point, you know, about how the last government dropped the ball and, and, and the host actually goes, look, we're not gonna we're not gonna play the blame game. But it was it was noticeable today how national politicians um, pulled out the blame Labour card a lot. I wonder if there's been a change on the ninth floor, a change from their PR people. And if you're hearing this in um, mono in one ear, that's because uh, that's how it's being played out to us from AM. So I'm sorry if this is only coming up on one channel for you guys. The previous government should have actually done, um, but you know it's it's unfortunate that it hasn't actually uh, come through. Um, you know by the uh, previous government, I think what we need we can do, and some of the, I do have some plans, but you know my plan is focused on a couple of. Um, areas, including modernising the Broadcasting Act of 1989. You know, the Broadcasting Act actually was uh, written and put in place well before technology companies even existed. Um, and also looking at better harnessing um, technology and innovation as the sector continues to transition online. Yeah, and we, I mean, we, we also the, need to ensure that government... In got to say as well, as the AM hosts, I, I you feel a palpable anger? Like, honestly, the way that that you don't often see, I mean, you do in this format of journalists cutting in and, and butting in because they have to, they've only got seven minutes, but it just feels like there's a little bit more, oh, are you being fucking serious behind these questions to me at least? Investment mm. in, you know, media remains well set up um, uh, to deliver independent and trusted uh, sources of news and information. The thing is, Minister, that to think that News Hub is a linear TV business is to misunderstand actually what the business. A bit of a bit of stank on this. News Hub is because we have a website, we have an app, we have streaming services, we've done radio, we've done podcasts. So, so how much more multimedia do you think businesses need to be to survive? Um, I, I'm not just talking about that, but I mean, there are elements of the Broadcasting Act, um, which actually is, you know, providing um, not fair uh, playing field for everyone. For example, you know, advertising doesn't actually, you know, there are restrictions on broadcasters where there are no restrictions for streamers. But these are specifics that will have to be worked through um, uh, the, uh, the process of, you know, cabinet as well as uh, rewriting the legislation. So there's part one of the conversation, Joey. Mm. Um, not necessarily saying the wrong things, you know, reworking the broadcasting. It's, I, I think all of that's pretty, pretty fine. The question is, how is it going to be implemented? What are going to be the changes? And do we trust yeah, this yeah. government to actually make any kind of changes that are significant enough? Let's say News Hub is gone forever to help the next group, the next entity that wants to come and do this, be able to do this. Yeah, like uh, I, I agree. There's some there's some good nuggets of information in, in what you're saying there. Yes, the Broadcasting Act probably does need to redo. the The media landscape is vastly different uh, than it was when they wrote that in 1988, 1989, whatever. Very, very seismically different. <laughs> like, and yes, we should look at that. Do I trust National to do a good job of this? No. 
where where am I getting that from? Everything else that they're doing at the moment. So yeah, they don't think in long term. You know, are we going to get something? You know that it's going to be open for submissions for twelve minutes, and the the public is not going to get input. Is it going to have any sort of democratic process? Are they going to listen to experts? All of these things that they're demonstrating that they won't do for a piece of legislation that is is going to involve how we consume entertainment and how we consume news information and who's going to be holding a spotlight on what the government's doing do i trust them to do it not at all because this is the problem in new zealand media at the moment we don't have a genuine public broadcaster because tvnz for example the 6 p.m news on tvnz has no funding from the government right it doesn't get any ends on any funding it's completely commercial the problem is we need to have unbiased unfettered the the main point to aim at is the news story first and not have to worry about conflicts of interest to serve advertisers so we're stuck in this situation where we've got sort of a pseudo public broadcaster and we've got an entity new zealand on here that gives money to broadcasters for projects that's why the 6 p.m news doesn't get any funding it's not a project q a is a project it's a quantifiable project with outcomes and a period of time right those those saturday sunday morning programs are are considered projects not like in the 6 p.m news is not so none of those news broadcasts the midday news the 5 30 news i think it's on prime 6 p.m news on three and on a tvz in the late night news none of those get any public funding so you've got this middle ground where we don't we don't have a publicly funded television broadcaster at the moment and we need one so what a government needs to do maybe it won't be this government is actually nail down a public broadcaster advertising free just say go and tell new zealand stories make the 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 first story in the news every single night make it the most important news story of the day you know not that we don't care who won f boy island but that's not a news story that needs to be focused on but we know it's a news story that'll get clicks on so maybe they'll put it at the end of the news on tv3 so it's just that we don't have that and we need that so until we have that this is all to me it's also sort of weasel words a little bit because they're talking about you know redoing this and redoing that and redoing the other it's like well no the first thing you need to do government x I'm not saying these guys are going to do it is show us how we can have a proper public broadcaster that should be the priority because if you don't what's going to happen is places like tvnz are going to continue to lose people lost 16 million dollars in the last quarter or the last half or whatever it was Mm. they're going to continue to lose people we don't we actually want to build people we want to have more reporters and tell more new zealand stories and um because we haven't got that everyone's kind of chasing that advertising dollar and because the advertising dollar is disappearing they're all struggling there needs to be a cornerstone public broadcaster that is um immunized from the ebbs and flows of the advertising dollar and we don't have it yet and that should be what this government and any government should be setting up including the last ones because they could have because they had a majority chewy yeah um i i think it would need time like how much vitriol was there out there for the public interest journalism fund just from the the crazy town segment of our population but look how many of us pay for netflix or some other streaming service right yep it fucking what's jesus it's been a while since i've looked at netflix 23 dollars a month yeah for netflix um and and surely that can be sold to the public of like well you know here's your benefit of of netflix you can watch some terrible fucking trash um or you can watch some terrible fucking trash on our platform and it also comes with the benefit of a, a free and independent journalism segment yeah. as well. Um, and and I know just just looking at stuff like the TVNZ app, that was a garbage app like just over 12 months ago. And it's pretty decent now. So I think that's where the pivot is. But how does that benefit news? The the like the idea of 
uh, you know, and this, this is how much it's changed since 1989, right? The idea of the linear six o'clock news happens same time every day. Everybody sits down, has their dinner, hears the news. Those days are gone. It's, it's, it's not locked in for, for the majority of New Zealanders. They consume their news differently. And so we have to look at how we fund this sort of stuff. And not only news, but local, local productions to keep that, that, those skill and those, those talents in those industries that feed into our film industry, that feed into our acting industry, feed into our writers and that sort of thing, that once they're gone, they're gone. We have to keep all of those things going. And I think when people, you know, boil it down to something like, well, I guess news isn't financially viable, um, just in, a, in isolation to everything else. It, again, it's real short-term thinking. And it's like when you're not getting news, you don't know what the government's doing. You certainly notice it in its absence. And when it's gone, it's way too late. Yeah, because like once once News Hub disappears, it's not just let's start this up with our thirty million dollar salary. It's the infrastructure. It's the equipment. It's the, you mm. know, it's it's all of these things that will be gone for good. It's yeah, much easier to continue something on than it is to start something new. Now they the the thing that was interesting is also in this conversation, which we're not showing, Melissa. Uh, Lee had a, a big old crack at the previous government saying they weren't doing enough. And mm. I was like, hang on, what was that $55 million PIJF that everyone's complaining about that was thrown at journalism that actually kept journalism alive for four years? And when it stopped is when it all fell over. So I, that's what I'm saying. It feels like there's a new uh, command being put down from the ninth floor that this is what we're going to do. We're going to go after Labour and they're going to be playing for, blamed for all the ills of the world. Although there was quite a good question that came up here because um, the minister used to produce uh, a program called Asia Down Under. Asia Down Under was funded by New Zealand On Air. Yeah. And a very, very, very good question is asked about the funding that her program received. Do you think that Asia Down Under would have been made and screened in a wholly commercial system? Uh, no, but I mean, that was specifically targeted for uh, ethnic communities and it was funded through New Zealand On Air. And New Zealand On Air plays a very important role um, where they actually fund programs that are potentially not uh, commercially viable, but it is mm. actually of interest and actually provides a service to New Zealanders. And, you know, uh, social cohesion yes. actually comes into one, you know, special interest yeah. um, areas actually comes into uh, the value uh, that, that they actually put on the programs yeah. that they actually fund. Government actually puts in some uh, close to, I think, $300 million a year to so do you think funding that, for programs, and I think do, it's a good thing. Do you think then that that funding should be extended to include the kind of current, current affairs programs that are getting cut? Um, as I said, I, I, I have my own views as to what could be done, but even New Zealand On Air... And you are here with us today to share those views. As the Broadcasting Minister. As the Broadcasting Communications and Media Minister. We would like to know your views. <laughs> operates at an arm's length from me as Minister of, uh, of Media and Communications. Um, their funding decisions are their own and I cannot influence or interfere in the process. You can assist though, right? You can, as Broadcasting Minister, you have some say. But, and, and I know that this has been important to you because in your maiden speech, you said there must be... Oh, I hate it when they bring receipts, eh, Chewy? Don't you hate that? <laughs> Isn't that makes it more difficult just to be like, maybe? ...be a mandate to provide and support local programming to foster identity issues, because without it, our children will never be empowered. I mean, are you saying now that you actually don't have the influence that you hoped you would in your maiden well, speech? Well, I think these are some of the things that I, I wanted to, not interfering in the process, but these are it's some of the mechanisms. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I know what you're saying. I mean, I find it extremely frustrating as well because I, I as minister, um, cannot um, influence or interfere in the process of programming. But I, I think, you know, going forward, one of the things that, I'd like to look at um, in the review of the Broadcasting Act um, is, you know, uh, is there a way that we can do some of this work that you're talking about, but, you know, without interfering. It sounds like someone who's brainstorming for a new television show around a table. It's like you're the fucking minister for media and communication. Oh, you know, we should look at some of the things you're talking. You, actually, you should be coming to us with what you're looking at, not kind of go blue sky thinking, yeah, we should... We should green light that. That's a good idea. Maybe we should go down that path. I think perhaps 
that's some of the frustration you may hear in the uh, in the host's voice. Without giving direction, mm -hmm. um, you know, mechanisms on how we actually fund certain programs. I mean, you know, these are things to actually talk about, but I, I can't go into the actual detail uh, of what I'm actually taking to cabinet until the cabinet process is actually done. And that's it. Now, there was one other comment which I'm not going to show now because it was a little bit snarky, but it wasn't a particularly good answer. Um, host asked, why have you taken over a week to come and see us? And she basically went, well, because I've been busy. I, I'm exaggerating. It wasn't as flippant as that. So mm. I'll tell you that the question was asked, but I, but I, there's no point really in showing it. Right, yeah, so it's yeah, like, oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, the, the biggest thing that is affecting the portfolio that you are responsible for primarily and uh, you could say that you're busy dealing with it, but part of part of dealing with it is the broadcasting minister is talking to broadcasters. Yeah, and she did say she did say she had done public. some interviews, but she couldn't do them all. But you know, this is yeah, the yeah. one of the two major television networks, one of the ones that's disappearing that should have been a mm. priority, in my opinion.